because the Zoomers see a life like we're about to look at and are like, this is basically Guantanamo Bay. Bruh. This is basically a life sentence. Like, if this is what's waiting for me, please, Lord, just take me right now. <laughs> talker named hubs life went absolutely viral over the last couple of weeks all he tries to do is normalize the norm he shows videos of what it looks like to be a 28 year old college graduate who has a wife and a dog i think a kid on the way and just a very normal nine to five job this has created a generational rift which is largely the boomers versus the zoomers because the zoomers see a life like we're about to look at and are like, this is basically Guantanamo Bay. Bruh. This is basically a life sentence. Like, if this is what's waiting for me, please, Lord, just take me right now. And the boomers are like, you know what? I'm glad to see a young person who's out there, who's working hard, who has a good routine, who doesn't mind a good, honest day's work. So there's just this great generational divide. Who's actually correct? Is this just an absolute mundane misery or is this stoicism and consistency and positive routine let's take a look at this tiktok zipping up his backpack driving to work working my nine to five he's in his cubicle goes to lunch sees his dog hangs out with the dog eats leftovers, goes back to work after lunch. So he gets off at 4.30. Hits the gym, good for him. Stay swollen. Haircut, gets home. Hangs with the dog. Showers. Dinner time, nice and easy. Drinks a beer. Watches a show and it ends by saying, I'm gonna do it all again tomorrow. Now I can't tell how much of this is a troll. The guy has a lot, a lot of views on these videos and uh, tons of contents. And people are saying it's, depressing. I just can't even imagine. And so who's right here? Because we have the boomers versus the zoomers. We have uh, the majority of our, our oldest generation. We still have some of the great generation around. And then we have our second youngest generation. I guess we're back up to generation alpha now with the youngest kids in society. But the Zoomers hate this. The Boomers love it. Who's right? Well, let's give the Boomers some credit. Uh, Proverbs 21.5 says, The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Proverbs 10.4 says, Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. This guy's just diligent. He's going to live a good life. He's going to have a good 401k. He's going to be a good dad to his kids. You know, it's, it's just it's a diligent life. It's a good life. Like there's magic in the mundane. There's something powerful about routine. Well, what about the Zoomers? Do the Zoomers have any points? Well, they can point to some of the great heroes of scripture uh, like Abraham. Here's how Abraham's story starts. The Lord said to Abraham, go and leave your land, leave all your relatives, leave your father's house and go to a land I will show you. You don't even know where I'm taking you. I'm just calling you into this crazy kind of like spontaneous adventure. And if you do that, I'll make you into a great nation, bless you. Your name will be great. You'll be a blessing. I'll bless anyone who blesses you, curse anyone who treats you with contempt, and all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. That's Abraham. That's not the normal routine. That's God calling him out of a normal routine and into the wonders of the unknown, right? Um, what about what about David? When David was a, a little kid in 1 Samuel 17, one day Jesse told his son David, take this half bushel of roasted grain along with 10 loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry out to their camp. And also take this cheese to their field commander and check on the well-being of your brothers and bring a confirmation from them. They are with Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And so David got up early in the morning, left the flock with someone to keep it, loaded up and set out as Jesse had charged him. And he arrived at the perimeter of the camps as the army was marching out to its battle formation. So, you know, if I'm a Zoomer and I'm trying to fight against this idea that I should just have this really boring, consistent routine, I might say, look, 
David was actually given instructions by his father to do this very routine job and just kind of be door dash for his brothers who were on the front lines. But if you know the story of 1 Samuel 17, that's not how this story ends. David sees Goliath out there taunting the people of God and is like, if y'all won't fight him, I'll fight him. And at you know, 13, 14 years old, he gets the king's permission, goes out there and slays the giant. So if you want to slay giants in your life, you can't just be in a nine to five. You can't have this normal boring life. You got to really get out there and make something of yourself. All right. So who's right? Should we settle into the mundane or should we strive for the extraordinary? Well, I want to end this discussion with the words of Jesus. Jesus, during the Sermon on the Mount, said this, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. It's like, well, okay, this whole conversation is kind of like worrying about our, our lives. Don't worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you'll wear, isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds. They don't sow or reap or gather, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them, and aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spend thread, and yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like the flowers. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, O you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For the non-believers eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Here it is. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. So this is a passage on like how to live a good life, and these are the things we worry about. How are we going to pay for things? How are we going to make a living? How are we going to do something significant? Is my life going to matter? Am I going to have impact? Am I going to feel fulfilled? The answer um, might be uh, not a very satisfactory answer if you really want me to take sides with the boomers or the zoomers, but the answer is neither. You can have the most routine nine to five life in the world and be so miserable and lack fulfillment and feel so hollow and empty inside. And you can have the most spontaneous, sporadic gig culture, you know, full time podcaster, full time celebrity influencer, uh, travel the world, make millions of dollars life and still be empty and feel insignificant and wonder what your life is about. We get the key to living the kind of life that we were called to live at the end of this. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That word seek is a hunting term and not hunting like we do in Texas where we put out a feeder and we trick the animals to come in and then we shoot them from like 20 yards away. No, you know, no shame, but hey, that's not the kind of hunting that was happening in the ancient world. This is like stalking it down, spending your time figuring out what it means to build God's kingdom on the earth. And here's what's amazing. You can do that in your nine to five rhythm with your wife and three kids and dog and mortgage. You can do that. You can build God's kingdom with the people in the cubicles around you. You can build God's kingdom through your service in your local church. You can build God's kingdom by the way that you love your, your spouse and raise up your children. You can build God's kingdom as someone who has a very non-normative job. You don't work a nine to five. You make your own hours. You live off the grid. You fly all over the world. You have a major platform. You make millions of dollars. You can build God's kingdom through your platform and through your work and through the flexibility of your life. You can do that. Uh, the question is, are you going to? And if you really want to experience the longing for purpose, fulfillment, and impact that all of us have at the core of who we are, we're longing to be a part of something significant. The way I said it, say it at a Metachurch all the time is to live life on purpose and with purpose. When you're doing both of those things, you're living a great life, whether you're in a nine to five or, or whether you're in a, a very obscure, spontaneous style of work, you can live on purpose and with purpose, but only when you are following the purpose that was instilled by the God who created you. And when you live your life with your God-given purpose, you will experience a quality of life where we don't have to argue about whether you should have a normal routine or not. Here's the other very pragmatic truth. People who work a nine to five and, and don't end up you know, going insane, uh, they have very non-normative aspects of their lives as well. Um, they start a family and there's a lot of spontaneity there. They have kids and their kids take on activities and there's a lot of spontaneity there. Um, often they have hobbies. There's a lot of spontaneity there. And the people who have the most spontaneous jobs, the content creators, the ones who are successful, they also have routines. And if you watched 
behind the scenes of the Dude Perfect videos, behind the scenes of the Mr. Beast videos, um, there is process and there is routine. Behind the scenes of your favorite album, there is process and rigor and you have a routine life. The question is whether or not you are seeking the kingdom of God. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed so you can stay up to date with all new content. And if you want early access, exclusive content, and monthly live Q&As, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Clayton Tyner.